Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna make this awesome knitting and braiding technique. And it's really cool and really simple to use. And this technique you can use in so many different variations. So today we're just gonna be in sandbox mode, just gonna play around in cinema. And if you're ready for that, then please go and subscribe, and like the video, so I know that you love this type of content. So if you're ready, then I'm ready. So let's just jump into cinema and I'll show you how to make knitting in cinema 4D. Okay, so here in cinema, we are first of all gonna start off by making the base shape of our knitting. And we'll do that by going to our top view. Then we'll go and select the spline. I think it's the spline pin, here it is. And then we'll just zoom down so we get this grid appearing. Then I'm gonna count two of these squares in and I'm gonna make point and I'm just gonna follow a shape kind of like this so we get this nice droplet shape almost and we're just gonna continue to here and then I'm gonna select everything by pressing ctrl a and then I'm going to hold down control and I'm going to drag. Then I'm going to rotate this 180 and I'll just put it so this point here lines up with the middle. Kind of like this. All right. And I'll just move this point also to the middle. Then we can just go and delete these two outer points. And we can go and select the two inner points, left click, and we can weld them together. All right, so now we have this weird S looking thing. So I'm just gonna pull these in a bit. And it's important that we pull these two the same amount on each side, because we're gonna be duplicating this a whole bunch of times, so it has to line up. And I'm just gonna do it like this. I think that's good. Just gonna move this bit here, move this bit. So you can see we're getting a bit of a shower, like hourglass type of look. All right, so let's go to our perspective view. Let's select these two points and let's pull them up. So we get this U kind of shape. Let's pull them up a little bit more and that should be it. All right, so now let's make a cloner. Let's put our spline inside of our cloner. Let's go to our object mode and let me just go into our cloner and make the size a little bit smaller. And for this one, I actually want to be in the top view so we can align it, so we can line it up as best as possible. All right, so it should be kind of there. And as you can see, we're just missing a little part of the spline here. So I'm gonna select the spline, I'm gonna go to my points view, and I'm just going to select this point, and I'm just going to drag it down here, like this. Let's go back. And as you can see, they are connected. Okay, so now we need to move the clones in the other direction. And we'll do that down here. And we need it to overlap just right around this much. So let me just make loads more clones like this, grid of nine by nine. And let's go and create a connect object. And let's put the cloner inside of our connect object. Let's go to our connect object and turn off the weld function. We're not gonna need that in this tutorial. So let's go and create a sweep and let's create a circle. And let's just put everything inside of the sweep like 
this. Okay, wow. So we need to go to our circle right here, and we need to set the radius to 10, maybe even less, that depends. And as you can see, we have this nice knitting pattern. So what we need to do now is make it random. And the way we do that is pretty simple. We just select our cloner and we come down here and we select a random effector. And this is really too much. So I'm just going to press two centimeters in the X and C value and nothing in the Y value. And as you can see, it's really not connecting anymore. So let's just turn off our C values and let's just move it in the X value then, just a little bit. And we're also gonna introduce some rotation, kind of like this. And yeah, kind of like this. All right, so you can see the before and after. Okay. And if you think that's too much, you can just pull it down a bit. Let's say 70. That should be fine. And for now, we don't need to worry about these holes here. We're just going to cover them up later in the process. So for now, we can just go and label this our base. So what I want to do now is actually do the animation part of this. So now that we have our pattern, it's time to make the animation. And I'm first of all just gonna turn off our sweep here and our circle and also our base. That should be fine. Or our connector, I mean. And let's just go to our clone here. And I'll just call our spline for the end part of our spline. And then we're gonna duplicate it and I'm going to call this start. And let me just turn off our cloner. So for the start of this, I'm just going to delete every single point except our start point, which is this one right here. So the way this works is that our cloner is blending between our start point and our end point. So that's why our start point should be this little point. So it's actually growing from this point. So now we need to make some intermediate frames in our blend. And I'll just duplicate my end here. Just a couple of times. Like this. Just call them 3 and 2. And 4. Okay. And let's just go and see in our points mode what we can do. And I think I'm just gonna go in the top view. Yeah, that should be better. So for our fourth clone here, I'm just gonna lead the endpoint. For our third, I'm gonna lead the two last points. And for our second, I'm gonna lead every single one here except the two first. So let's turn on our cloner. And as you can see, it looks a bit messy right now. So that's because we need to go inside of our cloner and we need to turn it to the blend option here in our clones. All right, so it's probably looking a bit weird right now, but let's just fix that. So I'll just go and select my cloner here and I'll make a plane effector. And inside of this plane effector, I'm just gonna turn off the position and I'm gonna go down here to others and we're gonna use this modify clone. Let's just pull that to 100%. And let's go into our fields options and let's make a linear field. Okay, so you can see when I move this linear field, we're going between all of our splines from the end to the start. And it's a bit choppy right now, but it's gonna look fine when we actually do the animation. So one thing I want to address right now is that you can see this thing right here, that is not a part of our spline. That is just a intermediate point 
the cloner decided to create. So I don't like that and I'm going to fix it right now with a pretty easy thing. So let's go out here and let's just turn off everything except our splines. Also these two. Then we're going to zoom down and I'm just going to turn off our end. And then I'm going to focus on our force spline. So now we're going to make some variation to this spline. So I'm just going to pull it up here and we're going to try to make it look like the spline is being laid down or pulled through the fabric. Our end goal here is actually to make it organic. So I'm just going to pull it up here and let's just see which effect we're going to get. And then we can go and to our third clone here. And we can also pull that up and see what that does. That does something interesting. All right. Let's just see. And I'm also going to go to my second clone here. Also going to pull that up, make it a bit weird in the busier handles. Okay, just like this. So when we go through all of our things now, we can see we have these points that are sticking out. And that is really good for our animation. So let me just go and turn on my clone here. And I'll also turn on my plane effector and my fields again. Let's just go and see what happens now. So you can see it's getting more organic now. So they're actually rising up and then they're laying down flat. And it's a bit more organic. But I still don't like this last frame where it's making this weird S and it's coming down. So how do we fix that? Well, we make another clone. And I'm going to make a duplicate of my end here. And I'm just going to call it 5. Then I'm going to turn off my cloner. And I'm going to go and select this and pull it up just like this. All right. So we also have that that is laying down. Okay, And that should fix our problem. So as you can see, we're sewing in all of our lines and it's looking really nice. So this is the core function of this technique. And it can be used in so many different ways. As you can see, it's actually just blending between our start and our end. And that means it has unlimited potential. So if you wanted any other way that this should move, just Go and move the splines in other directions, kind of like this. And then you'll totally get another look from this effect. All right. So now we need to make this effect a little bit bigger. And the way we do that is actually go here to our base. And I'm going to go and make it a instance. So we have our base and we have a copy of our base. Then we're going to go and I'm going to rotate this 180 and also gonna rotate it 180 on the other axis and then I'm just gonna find the right place to put it kind of like this so we have some opposite geometry and let's go and offset this so it doesn't look like a copy kind of like this and as you can see, it's filling out all of the holes. So that's pretty good. And yeah, that should make it a little bit bigger, our braided cloth. So I'm actually just going to go and delete the sweep because I'm going to do all of the sweeps in another way. So this is the base of our pattern. And now we have our animation also. But the next thing we need to do is actually make it so it looks like braided material. And the way we do that, first of all, I'm just going to turn these off, hide them. And then I'm going to go and make a helix. And this helix I'm going to set to 5 centimeters in the start radius here. And in the end radius, I'm also going to set it to 5 centimeters. 
then we're gonna go and make the height 400. And remember guys, these numbers are just what worked for me. And I'm just gonna go and change this end angle. Just gonna pull it up so it has a lot more curls. Maybe something like, like this. Then I'm just gonna duplicate my helix and I'm gonna turn it 90 degrees. I'm gonna duplicate it again, turn it 90 degrees, just like this. So now we have three strains. Then I'm actually gonna go and duplicate it again and also turn it 90 degrees again. So now we have this weird looking tube thing. So what I wanna do is actually go and select all of my helixes and I'm gonna right click and say connect and delete objects. So we get them into one object. Then we're gonna go and make a displacer. I'm gonna put it underneath my helix and I'm gonna go inside the shading tab and we're gonna create a noise. And as you can see, we have this weird organic looking thing. And that is really what we want. So I'm just gonna click on the noise to get inside of it and I'm just gonna make it bigger. Kind of like this. Just choose another seed here. Yeah, that should be good. All right, so let's call this. All right, so let's go and create a, if I can find it, a twist. And let's put this underneath our helix, underneath our displacer. Let's press fit to object. And I can see that we need it in the C plus direction. And let's just turn up the angle to something ridiculous. Kind of like this. So let me just go and hide it in the viewport. And as you can see, we're getting this helix, but it's a bit uneven. And that is really what we are looking for here. So I'm just gonna go to my displacer, turn it up a bit. Go into my noise, turn it down a bit, and really just play with it until I'm happy. Okay, let's try that for now. So the last thing we need is actually go in here to our deformers again, and I'm gonna choose the spline warp. I'm gonna put it as the last one, and as you might be able to see, there is an arrow facing this way, but we needed to face the right way. And we found out that that was the C plus direction. So let's just set it to that. And as you can see, the arrow is facing this way now. So that's perfect. So now let's go and unhide our patterns and let's also use the check mark on them. So let's go and select both of our base patterns here and let's put them in to a connect like this. Let's also call this base setup for now. Let me go to that and also turn off the weld. Then I'll just close this and I'll go into my spline warp here and I'll just pull in my base setup. And as you can see, we are now cloning our helix onto every single part of our pattern down here. And wow, it looks great. So let me just go and also hide our spline warp here. And we can see what it looks like when it's animating. So you can see it really looks so organic. But we're not quite done yet. So what I want to do now is actually go into our, my base setup here. And I'm just going to put a deformer, a formula deformer here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger like this and this is actually just to show you what you can do with this setup so you can use it in so many different ways the best thing about the setup is just that you can deform these base setups down here and you will be deforming the whole setup procedurally so let me just go and animate this linear fall off here and I'm just going to sit it here and I'm also just going to go out here and set it there. OK, 
kind of like that. And as you can see, things are growing on. And I'm just going to hide my base setup here. So you can see what's actually happening. And you might be thinking, what about these, Lucas? And that's actually pretty easy to do. We'll just go here and create a null. Let's just call it zero. And I'm just going to set that as our last clone here on our start. So as you can see, we just removed this step. Okay. So let's just go and make it a little bit more dynamic. So what we can do is go up here to our plane effector and we can go and create a delay. And it's just down in this modify layers tab. So we'll just create a delay and now it's set to smooth. And it's actually pretty nice just setting it to smooth and like turning up the effect strength. So you can see it's building more smoothly as we go through the object, we can also turn up the strength even more and we can set it to spring. And the thing to remember here is if you're not getting a good result with the spring, as you can see here, I'm actually just getting a weird wave. It's because you're clamped down here. So we'll just turn off clamp and it's gonna work so much better. So. Let's just go and set it to smooth again. I'm just going to set it to 75. And that looks pretty nice. So let me just make my timeline like 200 frames. And you can see we have this nice looking pattern. So what if we want to render this? Well, there's an easy way to do that. So I've just opened up my redshift layout here. The first thing I want to do is go to my helix up here. I'm going to right click under render tags. I'm going to select the RS object tag. And you can see that we get this curve menu. And if we go into that, we can select cylinders. And that is what we're going to use in this one. So let me just turn on my render and you can see what it does. You can see that it made all of these nice looking cylinders for us and it's a bit slow right now so we're gonna go down to interpolation choose fast and then i'm also gonna choose resample then we're just gonna set it to 16 for now so you can see it's getting really really low resolution so maybe let's sit to 32 and that is just what i'm doing while we are making the look so let's thicken these up. Let's put it to six. And that is a lot better. And we can turn up the sample steps right here. Let's see to 64. So let me quickly just put some lighting on it. Just gonna go and select a HDRI here from my pack. So as you can see, we have this really fast and nice looking meshing of our splines. So what I want to do now is go and make a material here. I'm gonna go into it and I'm gonna make the color kind of a greenish type of color. I found that this really suited the object and I'm just gonna make it a bit rough, not that bright in our reflections. And I'm gonna turn up the translucency. So I'm just going to color pick our diffuse and I'm going to make it brighter here. Alrighty. So let's just put it on our helix and let's just see what happened. Okay, so that is really looking nice. So the last step in this is actually going to be making some hairs that are also going to be copied onto this. And it's pretty easy. So let me just close down my render view here. Let me go and hide my cloner setup here. Let me go and turn off my spline warp. And what I want to do now is go and create a cloner, a new cloner called here. And for this, I'm actually just going to go here and make a arc. And I'm just going to make it editable by pressing C. And then I'm going to go and I'll just make this a little bit more weird to look at. 
a little bit more fuzzy, you might call it. Just like this. So we have this here. And just gonna go into my modeling mode here. And I'm gonna move my anchor point. Alrighty. So let's put this inside of our cloner. Let's go inside of our cloner and inside of the mode, let's choose object. Then I'm gonna go and feed in my helix. And as you can see, we have some nice looking hairs. I'm just gonna turn the count up to like 100. And then I wanna go to my transform and I'm just gonna pull the scale down to 0.1. Just like this. I can see that I maybe need to go into my arc here and scale it down a bit further. Let's go and create a random for this cloner. And let's go into the parameters. Let's turn off the position. Let's turn on the rotation. And let's just give it some random rotation in all of the axes. Just like this. Okay, and then I also need to turn on the scale and we'll set it to uniform scale and I'm just gonna put 0.5 so it has some different scale. I'm just gonna go and select my arc again and I'm just gonna scale it up a bit further, just like that. Now let's go and select our cloner. Let's go and right click and we'll say connect objects and delete. Okay, so now we have two different splines, a helix spline and a hair spline. So let me go and duplicate this spline warp. Let's put it under the hair. Let's turn it on. Let's turn on our regular spline warp. And as you can see, it's getting a little bit more fuzzy. So that's good. So let's go and duplicate our material and our tag to our new hair. And we can also delete our random up here. We're not going to use it anymore. So let's go into our redshift tag and let's turn the thickness down to like one. And let's also put it to hair strains. And then I'm going to use the scale option here to pull down the scale. So it tapers out as the hair gets out to the tip. Just kind of like that. So let's just go and see what it looks like when it's rendered. So as you can see, we have these nice hair strands now, and you can even add more to give it more fuzzy look. So as you can see, this is such a versatile setup, and you can use it for so many different applications. So if you wanna learn more, then please go into my channel, scroll down, there's loads of videos teaching you everything from particles to lighting setups. So if you want more interaction with me, then there is a link in the description to my Discord server. And if you need any help, that's also a really good place to write, because I know there's somebody out there that will help you. And at last, I also have an Instagram where I tease what the next tutorial is going to be about. So if you want a sneak peek, then please go there and follow me. And I think that was all the stuff I needed to plug for this video. So I just want to wish you a very nice rest of your day. Go and grab a cup of coffee, settle down, get into some tutorials, and I'll see you next time for some more cinema magic. Goodbye.